Today's NSCAA Highlights and Ranking Show is presented by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America, the world's largest soccer coaches organization. To learn more about the NSCAA, visit NSCAA.com. And to learn more about this week in college soccer, we simply hit the lights. From Georgetown Shaw Field, I'm Dan Halfridge, and we kick off today's show with a look at the biggest game of the week in men's Division I soccer as number three Creighton tied number 12 Georgetown. And it sounded a little bit like this. Be the in-swinger from Newman. Stevie playing in the middle of the box, headed flashing. Mule still has a chance, and Creighton's going to be able to clear. And Herbers, the free kick specialist, will take this corner kick for the Blue Jays. It's a near post run, flicked on, and just wide of the back post. And now it's Carlos McCrary. McCrary finds Bland in a drive and caught by Gomez. Allen bothered by Bland. Allen gets by a couple defenders. Allen into the middle. Allen a right-footed drive over the net. Georgetown countering on the ensuing play. Newman, Stevie with space, 30 yards from goal. He'll play a good ball wide to Skelly. Skelly tries to find Campbell, and Campbell cannot get a foot on it. Run. By, Air, by Miller and flicked one just wide of the goal. Skelly, a good ball, looking for Wheel. Sparrow off his line and Wheel couldn't quite get to it. Turnley able to keep it in on the left side with 33 minutes left in the regulation in this tie game. Skelly cuts inside. Skelly, good ball to Turnley. Josh has runners. Josh clips it for Allen, a header and a big save by Cutter Sparrow. Finding a little bit more of the ball, a little bit more space in the center of the park. Here's Herbert's a left-footed shot just over Gomez. Been in bounds. Campbell with the nutmeg pass to Snow. Snow back to Rudy. Tyler a drive wide. Get it to him. Here's the substitute, Jared Rist. Rist looks up and has runners. Clips a dangerous oh. ball. Newman header. Looked like it might have been handled. The, the referee says no. It'll be a corner kick. Rosenberry. Good little combination play with Dylan. Keegan looks up. First time to wheel. Back to Rosenberry again. A great ball across oh. the face. Oh, here's a chance for Creighton. Iskra has it. Iskra a shot over the net. Now let's go to the Continental Tire Studios in Chapel Hill and our host, Dean Lenke. Thank you, Dan Helfrich. Love your passion indeed. Of course, need to point out that Dan Helfrich actually is a former player of our very own NSCAA TV's Keith Tabatsik at Georgetown. And what a great way to kick things off. We have such a big show. I don't even have time to get to it. Let's just welcome in Charlie Slagle here as we get started with Men's Division One. And Charlie, guess what? We have a new number one team. And they reside in Berkeley, California. Alex Sundley uh, netted his second golden goal of the season to give uh, number one California a 1-0 overtime victory over Santa Clara on Friday at Goldman Field at Edwards Stadium. With just 52 seconds left from the end of the uh, first overtime period, junior midfielder uh, Max Ullman drove a dangerous cross, and uh, there it was Sundley in for the, uh, the winner. And Cal head coach Kevin Grimes, now in his 14th season with the Bears, says the ranking means a lot to the Cal program. Well, I think it's very uh, significant to our administration, to our alumni, and certainly our soccer community. You know, all the fans that have come out and supported us all these years. I think for all of them, they are really proud and so happy that we're ranked, you know, number one in the country and in a number of polls. And, you know, I realize in the NSCA we're number two. But uh, all in all, I think uh, to even, you know, be anywhere near there, <laughs> you know, one, two, or three, uh, I just... I just have found that uh, everybody is just really proud, and um, it's never happened in the 107-year history of Cal soccer. And so I think it's something that we have to be proud of, and, um, and we have to uh, put out to the public and let them know. And certainly uh, all the emails and phone calls and uh, text messages that we've all gotten over the last uh, three or four days, it's been, it's been great. And you can just feel that sense of pride, especially from our alumni uh, the guys that have played for Cal soccer and have wore this jersey, I mean, they just uh, are just really elated with, uh, you know, what's gone on this last week. Coach, Pac-12 Pac getting so much tougher. How does Pac-12 Pac prepare you for the important one, the NCAA tournament? Well, certainly the Pac-12 is having a great season. I think all six teams are, are doing tremendously well. Um, I believe three or four of us are even ranked in the top 25. So... 
Um, no matter who we play in the Pac-12 schedule, uh, we know it's going to be a very difficult game, and it's going to be uh, a game that you have to be at your best um, because any one of those teams are going to be able to uh, beat each other on any given day. And I think that's exciting. I think the Pac-12 coaches um, have looked forward to that. I think we knew that there was going to be a, a time and a day and a year where uh, literally we could have uh, all six teams make the NC2A tournament. And uh, this might be the year that that happens because everyone's having a really strong season. And so, um, you know, we've got the, the conference match or the non-conference match with Santa Clara on Friday. Uh, that's almost like a conference game. You know, you're playing a team that's local, that's familiar with you. Uh, always a great game. And again, always get you prepared for uh, the rest of your season. And whenever you get done playing a team like Santa Clara, you know, you know you're a better team the next week uh, because uh, they push you to the limits. And, and we hope we do the same thing for them and, and get them prepared for their conference season as well. Finally, Coach, in the last 30 seconds, now that the spotlight is on you, what's the best way to describe Kevin Grimes' Cal men's soccer? Well, I think over the years, we've always been known as a team that has a, a great style of soccer. I mean, we play a particular way, and um, I know that uh, there's other teams across the country that do so as well. Um, but uh, we've, we've been known for that for many, many years, you know, way back even when I started here in 2000, that we've always had a, a great style to our game and a game where uh, when players come to Cal, they can um, use their skills and their God-given talents uh, every match and, and put it out there on the field. Kevin Grimes, the head coach of the Cal men's soccer team. Thanks for being with us here on the NSCAA Highlights and Rankings Show. Thanks again. And today's interview with Cal head coach Kevin Grimes and all of the other interviews on this program are presented by Shattuck St. Mary's, a college prep boarding school with a full-time residential soccer center of excellence for boys and girls and a member of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy. Located in Minnesota and led by Jesse Fortney and Tim Carter, it is magnificent. To learn more, visit S-M. Dot o -R -G. And Dean Linky back with the longtime coach at Davidson as we continue to look at the top 10. Charlie, break it down for us, will you? Right, and right now we only have five undefeated teams in the country and only two that are undefeated and untied. Let's look at Washington. Once again, playing all over the country. They beat SMU 2-1. to one. Northwestern beat Michigan at Michigan 2-0. And UMBC, they keep it going. A 1-0 victory over George Mason and a 2-1 victory against George Washington. All right, let's flip it to the chart to 11 through 20. And last week's number one, uh, coached by Carlos Samuano, UNC loses against William & Mary at home and then goes to Wake Forest and ties. Clemson gets, two, uh, gets a victory in a tie. They uh, defeat USC Upstate 2-0, and then they tie at Virginia Tech 0-0. Dayton gets two more victories to stay undefeated, untied, with a 4-1 victory over, over Loyola Chicago and a 2-0 victory over Valparaiso. Number 16, Butler, with a massive win in Indianapolis against the reigning champion Indiana Hoosiers. Paul Snape with a big victory. And it was electric in Indianapolis, as it always is with this Indiana Derby. The Hoosiers are in all red, and Butler is in all white. Here's the deal. It's 2-0 at this point. In the 86th minute, Jordan Burt makes it 2-1, and Butler's got a little bit of life. But guess what, folks? They're not done. As David Goldsmith, he would be the hero in this one, at Butler, coming back over in the waning minutes, ties it up, and we go to overtime. And now Indiana in their fifth overtime game. They've already got three overtime losses with a tie and sure enough in double overtime remember that name David Goldsmith with the Butler fans cheering on down the left side and David Goldsmith with the winner a 3-2 stunner over the Indiana Hoosiers unbelievable result for Butler at home 3-2 Chances. Uh, we just have to believe that we can score. Goal scorers turn up in the big games as well, and that's what he did tonight. Um, Jeff put a great ball in, and Goldie was there. It was a great ball in. He just uh, gave everything to try and get in the box and try and get the head on the room. We didn't give up, and he looked at the clock. I, I don't exactly know. Was it three minutes and something left? Uh, the boys never give up. And it's a testament to these guys. They're an amazing bunch of guys, quality soccer players, and they always believe. They were absolutely phenomenal today.
What a great win for Paul Snape's Butler Bulldogs. Now in his second season coming over off an assistant from Michigan. Meanwhile, Indiana has had a tough. They're 3-4-1, and one, but they played on Sunday against the Ohio State Buckeyes to open Big Ten season. And Charlie, they got a 2-0 win, and Todd Yagley was very pleased. Win today, uh, going 1-0 in the Big Ten to start is, is always uh, a good feeling. And, you know, we put 25 shots the first half and I thought that showed really how we came out and really took a hold of the game. The last 30 in the first half was um, some fantastic soccer and the, the chances we're generating. I thought we played with, uh, with great energy. Um, we were intelligent in, in many of our possessions and we really put them on their back foot and that's something we talked about doing today. So uh, great 2-0 victory. We know that, uh, again, the Big Ten is going to be tough every game, so to get a, get a win is crucial, and now we have um, a real tough game on Wednesday, but I know our team's looking really forward to it. And the final five here for men, Division One, Charlie, led by Elon at 21. Well, let's talk about Elon. Elon had uh, been in, got out, now back in. Darren Powell's team, they beat Radford 1-0 uh, and then beat High Point 4-1, so they're back and uh, solidly in the top 25. Tulsa's at number 23, and Tom McIntosh at his 19th year at Tulsa will take on New Mexico's Jeremy Fishbein now in his 12th season. Fishbein's team is 5-3-1 on the season with wins over Georgetown and his alma mater, UC Santa Barbara. And, of course, the Gauchos are not in the top 25, but Stanford is receiving votes after their thrilling 2-1 overtime win in Santa Barbara on Friday night. 8,000 fans packed Harder Stadium Friday night to witness an exciting match between UCSB and Stanford. It took 95 minutes for the winner to be determined, and in the end, it was the visiting Cardinal that got the victory. I mean, it was a phenomenal game of college soccer. I thought Santa Barbara were incredible, and you know we were second best in a lot of departments tonight. And I credit to them, the unbelievable atmosphere, unbelievable crowd, and they they threw absolutely everything at us. 31 minutes into the first half, Stanford's Jordan Morris headed in the first goal of the match off of a free kick taken by his teammate Aaron Kovar. The Gauchos responded early into the second half with a goal from senior defender Peter Schmetz. Freshman midfielder Paul Emmon found Schmetz, who got past the keeper with a left foot strike. It was Schmetz's first goal of the season and his second of his career. While Santa Barbara was able to outshoot Stanford 7-3 in the second half, the Gauchos were not able to convert any of those shots into goals. It took five minutes of overtime for freshman forward Jordan Morris to once again be the hero for his Stanford team. Morris took one touch from 25 yards out, and he had a golden goal to top off his night. The, the big thing for us tonight was just that we, you know, we kept bending, but we didn't break. We, we hung in there, we kept fighting, we kept competing, even though it wasn't going great for us. Um, we had a good spell in the first half after scoring where we looked like we were settled, but the second half it was um, you know, tin hats on and uh, trying to survive the onslaught. And um, just a real credit to the players tonight. They hung in there, they kept going for it, and uh, you know, we got a chance in overtime and took it. Stanford's winning streak extends to five games with a win Friday night. Both the Cardinal and the Gauchos begin league play this week. Certainly it's safe to say that both of these teams are sure to make a big impression in their respective conferences this season. For NSCA.com, this is Larissa White reporting. Thank you, Larissa, and wow, what a big week in Division I soccer, leading us all the way to the Disney Soccer NSCA Player of the Week for Men's Division I, and he's from Furman. Tyler Peoples, the sophomore forward, tallied a pair of goals, including a double overtime game winner against James Madison to lead Furman to a 2-0-1 record and earn himself the Player of the Week accolades. And, of course, Continental Tire is the proud presenting sponsor of this program. Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence. Learn more at ContinentalTire.com. And it goes without saying that every one of these teams you saw here in the Continental Tire Top 25 and quite a few on the outside have aspirations to make the College Cup in Philadelphia. There's a reason soccer's called the beautiful game. Experience it live at the 2013 NCAA Men's College Cup, December 13th and 15th at PPL Park in Philadelphia. Affordable tickets now available. Visit NCAA.com slash Men's College Cup. Hey, Missy. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. I just don't want you boys to be late for your big game. Okay, have fun. I'll be right here after the game. 
Continental Tire, the official tire of Major League Soccer. Tra la la tra la tra la Pleasure. Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios as we roll on here with the NSCAA Weekly Highlights and Ranking Show. Dean Linky with you. That was a fast and furious start, and we've got more for you as we break through men's college soccer, including a visit with Division II power Simon Frazier. A little later on, we'll break down the women with Siri Rose, take a visit with Erica Wash from Penn State, and also look at the programs at the Division II level for Western Washington, as well as NAIA super powerhouse Lindsey Wilson. But before we do that, let's Let's go Division Two and take a look at the Division Two Player of the Week. Zovani Dokaz, a defender from Quincy by way of St. Louis, Missouri, is your Disney Soccer Player of the Week. And we're delighted for him. And of course, Disney Soccer is welcoming everybody to their proving ground. Disney Soccer provides elite athletes and their families a once-in-a-lifetime tournament travel experience. During our Disney Soccer Showcase, athletes have the opportunity to showcase their talents in front of the top college coaches from around the country. Teams who compete at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex will receive the first-class service that only Disney can offer, all while playing as a champion at the next level in the middle of the magic. To apply for our showcase series or to learn more about the youth tournaments, please visit us at DisneySoccer.com. And we welcome you back in. Charlie, now it's time to talk Division Two. Go ahead and break it down for us. Yeah, in Division Two, you'll see it up on the board. Uh, Want to uh, highlight UC San Diego, John Pascal's team defeated uh, Humboldt State 2 0 and also Simona State 1 uh, 0. And then St. Edwards uh, down the street there uh, from the University of Texas, the Hilltoppers, uh, they, uh, with Brian Young, their coach, uh, defeated Te West Texas AM 2 1 and then went to McMurray and won 7 0. Simon Fraser is the number one team in the country. Let's take a deeper look at that great program. Good season, the fact that we won uh, all of our games. Bit of a challenge when you try to integrate as many new players as we've had to this year because the guys graduating, uh, and it takes time. Uh, and we've had a couple tough games where we maybe haven't played as well as we'd like to, uh, but we showed the winning mentality and we won those games. Uh, and I think we're building, and I think we're getting better every single week. Now, what have been these keys to uh, the success over the past few weeks? Really, there's a couple of games where you've been down a goal. That's unknown territory generally in the past couple of years. Uh, what have been the keys to success? moving forward. I think the guys have the right winning mentality. We're going to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, we're going to play pretty football at times. If it's not pretty, uh, we'll do whatever it takes to go out there and, and grind out a victory. Um, and I think that's a huge part of our program and why we've had the success we have. Uh, and the new players have really bought into what we're asking them to do. And I think our returning players have really shown them what playing for us a few means. Uh, and we're growing as a team all the time. And I think that's a huge part of why we've been successful. Now it's been such a team effort this uh, season so far. A lot of new faces on the scoreboard. Who have been the players really to that stand out for the clan? You know, it's funny. I don't think we actually have anybody who stands out above everybody else. I think we have a big group of players that can all play. Um, I legitimately can change my starting eleven and put another starting eleven in. Then they're all exactly the same. Uh, they're all good student athletes. Um, they're all focused. They're all willing to work hard for each other. Uh, and I think that shows the depth that we have. Uh, we get scoring from all over the place. Uh, we have players that can play a variety of different positions. Um, Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, but we don't necessarily have that one guy who's leaps and bounds better than everybody else. I think everybody's good and everybody's willing to play for each other. The only Canadian school in uh, the NCAA. Why do you have so much success at this field? Uh, what is it about Simon Fraser and Foxfield that really makes it a home? Uh, well, Foxfield is Terry Fox. It's named after a Canadian legend. Uh, we have a board that when we walk out the tunnel onto the pitch, everybody knocks on the board in respect of him. Uh, and I think that's a huge part of our university. It's a huge part of this field. Um, playing here at home, we take a lot of pride. Uh, we also guys take pride in their performances and they take pride in playing at home field. Um, and we like to make it challenging for teams to come in here and play. And I think the guys really revel in that. It gives us confidence and we're excited to play at home in front of our own fans. 
Let's take a look now at the Division Three rankings, Charlie Slagle. And you see someone that's not on the top, York, coached by Mark, uh, Mark Ludwick, beat Messiah 1-0. Brendan Saberton scored 44-18 in. The shutout went to Brad Schmidt, and Messiah is no longer on the top. Uh, Brad McCarty's team is not there. Pushing up is Jay Martin's team at Ohio Wesleyan. The Battling Bishops defeated Hanover 4-0 on the road and then beat Worcester 2-1. David Schaefer, the senior goalkeeper, is your Disney Soccer NSCAA Player of the Week. Schaefer commanded his penalty box convincingly as he punched away countless crosses and organized a defense that has surrendered only four goals in six games. Congratulations to David Schaefer. Time now to roll into junior college. Start with junior college men division one. A new number one, Iowa Western. Uh, they had two victories. They beat uh, Northern Iowa 2-0 and then beat Scott 8-0. Tyler lost to Richland College 1-3. That's why they have dropped to number three in the country. Roger Espinoza's team, Yavapai College, is at number four. Next week, we'll have a very special feature on Iowa Western, both their men's and women's program. All right, Junior College Men Division Three, And let's look at number nine, Feather River. They are 7-3-2, and, and you wonder why they may be there. Of those 12 games, they've only played two at home. They had a big victory by defeating Lassen 3-2, and then they went also to Mount Sac and won and tied 0-0. All right, finally, NAIA men. Unranked Graceland shut out number 15 Mid-American Nazarene 3-0 in Torbo's National Men's Soccer Game of the Week, presented by NSCAA and Admiral Soccer. In the biggest upset of the weekend, Emmanuel defeated number 11 Mobile by a score of 3-1 to one on Friday for their first Southern States Athletic Conference win of the season. And there are three unbeaten teams, Dean, in NAI soccer. Number 8, Biola from California, 6-0-1. Unranked Corbin from Oregon, 6-0-1. And, and unranked Weber International from Florida, 4 O and O. The NAIA is the leader in character-driven intercollegiate athletics. The NAIA Champions of Character program was first established in 2001 and continues to evolve. The CFC program provides training for student athletes and professional development for coaches and staff. The five core values of integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership are put into play and accounted for at NAIA schools. For more information, go to championsofcharacter.com. O -R -G. That'll wrap up men's soccer. And of course, at the Division I level, we've got a new number one exciting teams, and you keep talking about parity. Parity, and it starts with Division I, but it's all the way down. You're seeing very few big scores. You also are having teams that are uh, getting, getting knocked off by uh, unranked teams that are number one in the country. Parity, parity, parity. Yeah, even Messiah no longer your number one as well. I want to thank Charlie Slagle for being with us. When we come back, we'll be joined by former Wake Forest goalkeeper Siri Rose as we take a look at women's college soccer right here on the NSCAA Weekly Highlights and Ranking Show from the Continental Tire Studios. The new fall flooring styles are here, and we've got them on sale now at Lumber Liquidators. Save on new hand-scraped and exotic hardwood, bamboo, laminate, and more. Choose from 53 floors under $2 a square foot. Don't wait. Sales going on now at Lumber Liquidators. There's a reason soccer is called the beautiful game. Experience it live at the 2013 NCAA Women's College Cup, December 6th and 8th at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Affordable tickets now available at NCAA.com slash Women's College Cup. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com education.
Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios here as part of the NSCA Weekly Highlights and Ranking Show. Dean Linke now joined by former Wake Forest goalkeeper Sari Rose, and that means it's time to talk women's college soccer. And Sunday, you were in Charlottesville to watch the number one team in the country, and guess what? They're now 11-0 talking about Virginia. Yeah, the Cavaliers are just a dominant team this year. They did a great job against Maryland on Sunday. They had the record crowd, and we talk about Mackenzie Donick and Morgan Bryan, but on Sunday it was super sub Brittany Radcliffe's goal. 17 seconds left in the first half. She puts it away for her seventh goal of the season, and that's all it took against Maryland. At four, we see Randy Waldrum's Fighting Irish. Notre Dame is 5-0 as the newest member of the ACC, and they punished Maryland 5-0 before beating Pitt 3-0 this Sunday. And then at 10 are the Pilots of Portland. They are also on a five-game win streak and are led by Mikhail Capel and Amanda Frisbee. Amanda Frisbee, she plays up top for them, she plays in the back for them, and she's an exciting player to watch. Penn State is your number seven team in the country after advancing to last year's national championship game. CAA TV, I'm Kelly O'Brien, joined today by Penn State head coach Erica Walsh. Coach, this week we start our third week of Big Ten play, and it's no secret that Penn State has been dominant in the Big Ten conference over the last decade and a half, winning the last 15 straight regular season titles. What does the team's history and past team success mean to the current squad? Well, we have a, a saying within our program to play for the play for those who played came before you. And I think it's more than just a saying. I think they really believe in that. Uh, they've got some traditions that they pass on from year to year. And, uh, and we also hear from the alums all the time, whether it's through social media or coming back and supporting the team and sitting in the stands in Jeffrey Field. Um, but I think it's, it's much bigger than just Penn State soccer. It's the success of Penn State um, athletics in general. Uh, last, take last weekend alone, um, every one of our teams were successful. I think we had an 8-0 record last weekend. So um, there's a lot of pressure to be successful around this place, and I think the student-athletes thrive under that type of pressure. Penn State had an exciting run last season, making their first ever appearance in the national championship game. What was that experience like, and what do you think it meant to the players that returned for this season? You know, I think about this freshman class and where they were in 2010 when they started with this program, and uh, we struggled a bit in 2010. Um, we really struggled to win the Big Ten. Uh, we came out in the end and uh, won it by the skin of our teeth. Um, but where they were then and where they are now, they've grown leaps and bounds. And um, many of them chose Penn State to come and get the best academics, um, but also to win a national championship. And uh, to see them in that spotlight, to see them thrive and to really perform, that match against Florida State in particular in the semifinal, I was just so proud because they walked out onto the field and they looked like they belonged. They felt like they belonged. And, um, I think this senior class is poised and ready to, to really make an impact this year. And finally, you're on the road this week with, for two tough road matches against Wisconsin and Minnesota. What will be the keys to success in those two matches? Well, I think just understanding um, to respect every team in this conference. Um, you know, we talked to our team about ne not necessarily fearing their opponent, but that respect is of the utmost importance. Um, that trip in particular is one of the most challenging trips in this conference. Um, not only two great teams, but the travel involved as well. And um, so we talked to them about preparing their bodies, whether it's for the flights or the time of the year where um, exams are kicking in and you're starting to see some illnesses and fatigue, um, but to make sure they take care of the details through sleep and proper nutrition and to really focus on the things that are important, the little details that are important for success. Thanks for joining us today, Coach. For NSCAA TV, I'm Kelly O'Brien. Thank you so much, Kelly. Good to visit with Erica Walsh as well as we take a look now at 11 through 20 women division one. And 11, Neil McGuire's California Bears are still undefeated at 6-0-3. This is California's best start since 2000 and is large part due to their solid defense led by senior goalkeeper Emily Kruger. And then at 18, Erica Walsh was talking about the Wisconsin Badgers. They are also off to their best start in the Paula Wilkins era. The team's done well on the road the past two weekends, but this face-off against Penn State and then Ohio State this week is going to be tough for them. West Virginia's at number 15, and Nikki Izzo-Brown's team's won four in a row, including two this weekend on the road to start Big 12 play. They beat Oklahoma State 2-1. And Baylor 4-3 and senior Francis Silva leads the Mountaineers with 22 points on 6 goals and 10 assists. She talked about the big weekend on the road for the Mountaineers. 
Francis, the team's opened its Big 12 season with two wins on the road. How huge was that for you guys? It's a big deal, um, not only for obviously conference, but RPI going forward. Um, we came in and played some a couple of very good teams and uh, were able to get it done on their home field. So I think it's a big deal for us to uh, keep going through the Big 12 and continue our nice little streak back in the Big 12. You beat Oklahoma State 2-1 on Friday night, then came out here today and beat number 9 Baylor 4-3. to It's your first top 10 win of the season. Is it good just to come out here and put four goals on a team that hadn't allowed a goal at home all year? Yeah, um, we knew our offense had a lot of firepower, and we knew that um, we could do some things against this team, and it was good to, to come out and do that and um, be able to say that, you know, even though no other team has scored on them, we came out and we scored four on them. It's huge for our offense, and uh, even, I mean, he scored, so big for everyone, really. This is your first step in defending your Big 12 title. Where do you go from here? Um, only up. You, you keep defending it, uh, you know, keep, keep get, uh, beating all those teams in the Big 12, and hopefully um, get another ring. Dean, another big matchup this week was in Provo, Provo, Utah, where Denver came in as the number 19 team in the country, and Jennifer Rockwood's BYU Cougars came in at number 17. Jeff Hooker's Pioneers moved up three spots to number 16 with the 1-0 win at BYU, and let's see some highlights from that video. Well, I think Denver's a very good team. They came in and played very well against us and really kept us on our heels. And uh, obviously it's very disappointing losing, uh, giving up a goal in the last few minutes of the game again. It's, it's quite disheartening. And, and unfortunately our players are just starting playing with a lot of confidence right now. And again, Denver was a great team. They came in and, and did what they needed to do. But uh, I thought our defense played very well. I think we made some good progress in our ability to possess out of the back, which is something we've been working on. But we just have to keep the ball. I mean, we're just really struggling on keeping the ball in our midfield area and and so it's not allowing us to get forward in our attack very much so you know we've got some things to improve on the girls have got to just you know continue to battle uh, it hasn't been easy these last couple weeks and we just got to fight through it and and uh, we got a big game ahead of us at Baylor and then we start our conference play so there's still a lot to look forward to and we just got to just get better each day the most important thing for us right now is we just have to keep the ball better. That's what our program's always done. We've always been a possession team, and for some reason right now, uh, we're just struggling to keep the ball. We're, we're just, uh, you know, making unforced uh, turnovers, and uh, we just need to keep the ball. And that's how we gain confidence going forward, and right now we've, uh, we don't have that. And so we got to continue to work in practice uh, to just keep the ball a little bit better as we uh, go toward our opponent's goal. Big win for Denver as we take a look at your final five, Michigan at 21. And at 23, we need to talk about another Big Ten team, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. After suffering a couple of early losses to teams like BYU and Arkansas, the Huskers are on a six-game win streak. Receiving votes right now is Texas A&M as they are starting to gain all kinds of momentum. They had a big win against Mississippi State on Friday night, eight to nothing. Let's roll to the highlights. And 28 seconds in, Allie Bailey would put this one away, and folks, they were just getting going. Shea Kroom would then take an assist from Janae Cousineau, and just a few minutes later in the 14th minute, right here, and Shea Groom will be at the end of that. And 14 minutes in, it's Texas A&M 2, Mississippi State 0. Megan Strait hadn't scored a goal all season, but Allie Bailey delivered this perfect corner kick. And Megan Strait gets on the board for her first goal of the season. But she wasn't done. Literally two minutes later, it's Megan Strait again with her head. And it's 4 nothing, And we're not even at halftime yet. And they weren't done in the first half. Anna Cruz would get on the board. A great assist from Lee Edwards. How about this one? From way downtown, and they head into halftime. G. Guerreri's team up 5 to nothing. They come out in the second half, same thing. Shea Groom with her first goal, second goal of the game, rather. Assist from Carly Mueller, and now it's 6 nothing. And then the tall one, Annie Coons. What a handful as she comes around the turn. Top of the 18, hammers it home, and it's 7 nothing. And then off the bench as everybody gets to play, Sanchez Quintanar would get her first goal of the season as well, and it would be 8 to nothing Texas A&M over Mississippi State. Then on Sunday, they beat Vanderbilt 3 nothing. so 11 goals in a row for Texas A&M. And our Disney Soccer Player of the Week is from Notre Dame. We saw the great job she did on Crystal Dunn when they came in here and beat North Carolina, but she exploded for a hat trick in ACC play against Maryland. Carrie Recaro, who also part of that great U.S. Under-20 team, is your Disney Soccer Player of the Week. Rolling on here now to Division II. 
Your player of the week is none other than Manny Bruckner, the midfielder from Gannon by way of Valencia, Pennsylvania. Had a big game with some goals as well. Manny Bruckner, your Division II Disney Soccer NSCA Player of the Week. And speaking of Division II, let's take a look now at the top 10 for Women Division II, Sarah Rose. This week, top 10 remains relatively unchanged from last week with Grand Valley State, Western Washington, St. Rose, and University of Tampa in the top four spot. A team that we haven't talked much about though is American International, who is number seven this week. Not only are the Jackets seven and zero, oh, but they haven't given up a goal all year. And then at five, the Minnesota State Mankato Mavericks are seven one and zero oh, and have four straight since losing to Grand Valley State. Western Washington is number two, located in beautiful Bellingham, Washington. Coach Travis Cannell's team has outscored their opponent this year, twenty six to two. Western Washington women's soccer is ranked second in the nation, and I caught up with head coach Travis Connell to talk about just what it is that has this team unbeaten. Well, everything starts with our defense, and we've got a very athletic team, and they have all bought into the system we're playing, and so when you combine those two things, you know, we can be very aggressive and, and, and trap teams, and, and it it helps create easy chances for us in transition. So everything starts with the way we play defense. They take so much pride in that, and uh, and it's it everything builds off of that. Coach Connell has plenty of big name players, but emphasized experience and depth as reasons for their perfect season so far. I mean, they're the they'll be the first to tell you that it's a team team effort. But we have some players that that have done special things for us. Sabrina Sitch is our is a right back for us, and she's one of the best out attacking outside backs probably in the country. Uh, Kristen Maris, who is a goal scorer, a target forward that helps get more players into the attack, helps us keep possession, but can score goals, and is very dangerous on, on restart. Like I said, we have a really, really deep bench, and there's players that come off the field and or come off the bench and play 10 minutes and score a goal for us. and. There's players that play the whole game and don't score, so I think that I think the depth of our team is probably more important than specific players. The past few years we've kind of been the underdogs, and now, especially with these rankings, um, kind of puts a little bit of a target on our back. So I think teams are giving us our best game, and we're ready and excited for it. The Vikings went 19 and four last season, but said that just made them hungrier to get a national championship this season. Getting as far as we did last year and getting a taste of what that's like has kind of been that extra motivating factor to help us push through on those tough games. We have to come up for the small games. I think that's the most important is get up for every single game, no matter who we're playing. If it's a you know nationally ranked team or not, it's important to play every game. We have a fantastic soccer team that competes nationally. We have a highly ranked uh, academic institution at Western and we have one of the best cities in the world. I mean it's it's also ranked as one of the best places to live so uh, why would you not go to Western? For NSCAA TV, I'm Emily Pedersen. Rolling on here now, NCAA Women Division 3, Sari. We see uh, Johns Hopkins and Wheaton are in the one and two spots but at Four, we have Trinity. The Tigers tore past Austin 6-1 this weekend and have out outscored their opponents 51-4 in 10 games. Junior Emily Jurgens has 11 of the goals and leads the team with 30 points. And then last week, the battle of the unbeatens was in New Jersey. We saw Montclair State not only give College of New Jersey their first loss of the season, but they also bumped them up from the four spot. Kimberly Bogan from Mar Marywood is your Disney Soccer Player of the Week at Division Three. Bogan scored two game-winning goals and back-to-back -back conference wins. The sophomore midfielder had the game winner on a header off a corner kick and an 8-2 win over Cedar Crest. He then added two goals and a 3-0 win versus Baptist Bible. Bogan was named the Colonial State's Athletic Conference Player of the Week as well for her production. Time now to look at junior college as we welcome back Sari Rose here and it's a good time now to roll into the junior college rankings as well. Sari Rose, how are you feeling about junior college? Well, once again, you know, we see Paradise Valley is going to be at the top of the conference. They're 11-0. We talked a little bit about the Iowa Western men team, but we now need to mention the women's team in the two spot. They've won seven straight since losing to their first game to Butler Community College and they're on a tear this fall. At number nine, Georgia Perimeter College is 11-0. Not only are the Jaguars averaging more than three goals in a game, but their stingy defense is sixth in the nation. 
And as we roll here now to Junior College Women Division Three. At Division Three, we've got to look. Cerritos remains number one with a, an, an unblemished record. Brookdale Community College is on the rise, though, and they're number two in the nation at 8-1-0. And, oh. and finally here, NAIA for women's soccer. Number 12, William Carey bested number 20, Bruno, in the NAIA Women's Soccer Match of the Week last week. William Carey's Emily Davis scored both Crusader goals, giving Davis 16 goals on the year, which enters the week leading the NAIA. Number 18, Concordia defeated number 21, Cal State San Marcos 1-0, and number 17, St. Thomas, knocked off number 23, S. Scad of Savannah, 4-3 in this week's only top 25 battle. Three teams, both perfect records as of September 29th. Avila, the Masters, and Vanguard are all undefeated. Spring Hill leads the NAIA with 70 goals this season, the most at any level. The Badgers boast five games with at least seven scores, including a, get this, 25-0 win against Stevens on August 30th. Incredible, but the Blue Raiders of Lindsey Wilson are still number one after winning the title last year and head coach Drew Burwash now in his 11th season is coming off an impressive 8-1 win over Shawnee State on Saturday. Hello, this is Chris Wells for NSCAA TV. The Lindsey Wilson College women's soccer team is ranked number one in the NAI with a record of 8-2, including 3-0 in the Mid-South Conference. I asked Coach Drew Burwash about the similarities between the 2012 National Championship team and his top-ranked Blue Raiders. Well, it's a new group, but I, I think we, we've got a lot of returning players that I think have taken the role as our older players did last year and are guiding the young ones. And, you know, through leadership by example, I think is a great way to, to start out. Coach, talk about the importance of having that veteran leadership to go along with, with all the newcomers that you have on the team this year. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. We have, uh, you know, several girls that have been able to experience a national championship. They know what it takes. It's an absolutely grueling test with you play four games in five or six days. And it, um, to have that experience from a year ago will be um, extremely helpful as we go forward. I think there's a lot of strengths to this group. Uh, two probably the main ones that we would like to focus on is is we like to possess the ball. For us to be effective against uh, some of the best teams in the country, we have to have possession. We don't break you down as well individually as we do collectively. Um, you know, another strength of this team is, is the work, the hard work that they put in on a daily basis. But certainly, if you've been able to see our team play, invest in, in matches as well. Coach, what makes Lindsey Wilson a unique place to play soccer? I think it's the people. I think it's the people that you get to know. I think it's the leadership from our president, you know, to our AD, to our faculty and our staff. And, you know, certainly we, fortunately for our team, we've been able to attract really good student athletes. So they're, they're not only focused on, you know, their soccer careers here, but very vested in their academic progress as well. I think this year's team, um, is working just as hard as the team last year. We have um, new players that um, have brought some new great qualities to the t team that's um, making us better. Um, we've had great preseason this year. Uh, started off the season well too and I feel like we're progressing each game just like last year. Um, we're moving forward and I feel like we're growing each time and it's a great start of becoming a better team together. For NSCAA TV, I'm Chris Wells. All right, that is women's college soccer in the books and certainly exciting time, particularly at the Division One level. As we said, you were in Charlottesville to watch that impressive team. But this is a big week with a lot of matchups between top 25 teams. Yeah, and I think we talked about once you get into conference play, anything can happen, and we're going to see that. Notre Dame's now in the Big East. We're looking at Penn State going out to – take on Paul Wilkins Badgers and I think we're going to see some changes in that top 25 in Division 1, 2 and maybe even 3 this week. Of course Notre Dame in the ACC as well and they're undefeated at 5-0. and Sari Rose we'll see you next week when we break down all of those key matchups. It will be fun 
And speaking of next week, a big show coming your way, October 8th at 1 o'clock, the NSCA Weekly College Highlights and a Ranking Show. And we've got more exciting college soccer games coming to you as well on NSCA TV. On Wednesday, October 9th, we'll be out in Tulsa to see Tom McIntosh's team take on New Mexico. And then Louisville, Ken Lola's team will take on Ray Reed's UConn team on Saturday, October 19th. And then Friday, October 25th, Duke, led by John Kerr, Jay Vitovich's Wake Forest Demon Deacons are headed into town. Staying with that, we want to thank everyone for playing such a key role in today's program, including our on-air talent for Georgetown, of course, Dan Helfridge, Butler, Texas A&M, Melanie Schneider at Indiana, UCSB's Larissa White, Dean Caperez at the Cal Bears, Ben Coles at Simon Fraser with their great head coach, Alan Koch. Really enjoyed that piece. On the women's side, Kelly Bryan at Ohio State, BYU, West Virginia, Western Washington's Paul Madison and Emily Patterson, and of course, Lindsey Wilson giving us that great look at the NAIA. Everybody at the NSCAA, including Kathleen Hermes, Pat Madden, Chris Burt, Monique Bowman, Rob Kehoe, Joe Cummings, Christine Mason, and the NSCA crew, our producer and director Kyle Lang, and, T and Taylor Hoggard and his great crew, and my partners in the studio, Charlie Slagle and Sari Rose. For all of them and anybody that I missed, I'm Dean Linky, reminding you that this broadcast was presented by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. The NSCAA is grounded by its three core values. Learn, participate, and belong. To learn more about the NSCAA, visit nscaa.com.